Hello, my name is Vince Pazat, Technical Project Manager here at Blast One. And today we're going to go over the Mist Blaster. The first things we're going to go over is the outside features, the first things you see when you come up to the unit in the field. So let's take a closer look at the Mist Blaster here. So the first thing you're going to see is the air in. So this is your compressed air from the compressor. And on the top of the unit here, we have supply air pressure, blasting pressure, the dials for what you would want to blast with, whether it's dry, wash down, or mist blast, and a regulator. The newer versions coming out will eliminate this regulator and just have a simple on-off switch for the water. The next things you're going to see are the blast air regulator, your dead man controls, and your e-stop. Let's move to the inside of the cabinet. Your compressed air comes in, goes through a regulator, down, tees off, and supplies the blast pot, then through your auto air valve and out through the pusher line. The mist blaster is a dry blast pot setup and we simply inject water after the metering valve. The signal valve, which would be supplied by the front, would then be selected for wash down. You actually open up one air actuated ball valve or the other. So wash down is actually gonna be this side and there's no needle valve here because you don't need to adjust water, you're gonna be running at full pressure. So if you would hit the trigger right now, this ball valve would open and it would allow this pump to push water through the injection block. And in the mist blast, it actually signals this air actuated ball valve and you have a needle valve here to adjust how much water flow you're using in the field. And of course, dry, neither one would open and you would simply dry blast like a dry blast pot. It comes standard with electric controls, uh, can be by powered if needed. We have a 80 mesh a strainer for the water before the pump and a five to one pump that is regulated down to 50 psi in the field. Once selected for wash down or mist, the water travels through the black lines which end up at the injection block. The one in the front is always going to be washed down because you don't have to worry, worry about wear in the end of the injection block as to where when you have abrasive in your stream you will have to worry about wear and as you can see it's placed further back to get more wear out of the injection block as well as check valves in the system. Mist blast will come through right here after the metering valve and wash down will be in the front. So in the field, we had a lot of issues where customers were getting um, water rushing back to the machine, whether they were going up 200 feet and when they lost the trigger, it would hammer back and blast the, the unit itself. So we installed several check valves throughout the system. We have check valves over here underneath the air actuated ball valves for the water system, a main check valve before the metering valve here, and two more check valves on the start of the injection lines. And what this does is makes it foolproof for blasting heights. So a lot of customers ask a lot of the times, hey, you know, will this work in a tank application because we're going straight up? And the answer is yes, it actually works quite well. So the first thing you were gonna wanna do is hook up your supply air line. Make sure you have whip checks and make sure the air is ran through an air dryer and is properly dried. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure your dump valve is closed, make sure your e-stop is pulled out, and then open up supply air pressure. So once the unit is supplied, you will hear the pot pressurize and you will see the gauges read to whatever setting you have it set at. You're going to run the blast pressure regulator whatever your desired pressure is. And you can do this in the field as you continue blasting. Uh, it doesn't have to be set at full pressure. So some guys are blasting steel or brick. So the two different uh, blasting pressures there, obviously. So the next thing you wanna do is select whether you wanna dry blast, wash down, or mist blast. So um, let's just say we're going to start off mist blasting. We have uh, interior brick and we cannot have dust in this building because there's customers on the floor below us. So we're going to switch to wet blast. The regulator to the pump is set already to 50 PSI. We don't have to mess with it. And what we're going to do is pull the blast trigger, your dead man handle. And what that's going to do is open up the mist blast air actuated solenoid there. So what's going to happen is you're going to start blasting at standard dry pressure and you're going to be able to adjust your water, how much water you want by twisting the little T-handle here. And you can turn it completely off if you want to, or you can, you can turn it as minimal as possible, or you can go wide open with it. So that would be the wet blast application 
Um, obviously, you don't want a bunch of slurry on the ground. You don't want a huge mess. So just enough water to suppress the dust is what we're shooting for. And if you wanted to dry blast, you don't have to change anything else. You simply switch it to dry blast mode. It'll shut off the water features and you pull the trigger. You do have to let off the dead man handle when switching modes, but it's only for literally a second. So let off, switch, pull the trigger, and you're rocking and rolling. So when you switch to dry blast, you're using the same as the standard 6.5 dry blast pot. You're not injecting any water. Abrasive inside the pot is dry at all times. And you are able to blast all day like that if you want. And then the wash down, wash down feature is water only. So what we did here is we implemented a remote abrasive cutoff into the system and shut off the metering valve and opened up the right side of the air actuated ball valves. And what that allows you to do is blast with only water pressure. You can regulate that blast pressure down as low as you want and simply wash off everything after you're finished if it's applicable. At the end of the day, shut off. Um, I would say proper shut off is always, always, always make sure your inlet air is closed. It's very important. And then from there, you're going to dump to the exhaust valve. Once you get it to depressurize, as long as the weather permitting, you don't have to drain water or anything like that. You're ready to go for the next day. Another thing you're going to want to look at is metering valve. Um, just like every other sandblaster out there, there is some sort of metering valve. And on this particular unit, we use the tear valve. Typically with a garnet, you're going to be you know, three and a half, four turns out, four and a quarter turns out from all the way in. So how we adjust this is, you're gonna to wanna to take the knob all the way clockwise until it stops. And from there, you will go four, say four and a half turns. And that is going to be, you know, a good starting setting for a uh, standard garnet. Or if you were slag, you would obviously be five to six turns somewhere in there. So when adjusting the blast pot, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna take it uh, to where the unit sputters so you know that you're rich and then from there you're going to turn down on the metering valve until you get a consistent almost whistling noise and what that allows you to do is keep the abrasive moving through the blast hose at optimal pressures. All in all it's pretty bulletproof we don't run into a lot of issues but some of the things we have seen over the years here at Blast One are um, water issues so um, customers will try to use this system with an IBC tote and have no way to get the water to the pump. So the pump is not self-priming. You do have to put another pump in line to pump or simply use a garden hose. Um, some other things to go over um, are three-way switches. So an easy way to tell if the three-way switch is maybe bad. Um, Customers will say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm blasting in the mist blast position, but I'm not getting any abrasive. of what's going on. Well, the first thing that I like to check is I go to the three-way switch. And in blasting, the back side of this is an air port on the bottom of the three-way switch here. And if you have blow-by coming out of that port when you're actually blasting, there's a seal messed up inside of the three-way switch. You should have no air coming out of that. Um, other troubleshooting issues arise when a uh, customer's not using dry air. So it's always very important to run the blast pot through an air dryer of some sort because wet sand does not flow. And if that does happen, an easy trick to get out of that, say you have moisture inside your pot, is simply choke the pot a little bit. And what this does is put positive differential pressure down on the mist blaster and allows you to have more pressure inside the vessel than what's going out of the line and pushes the abrasive through. Uh, you don't want to run like that the whole time. It's going to cause premature wear, but it will get you by in a pinch. Um, another thing you do with the choke valve is opening up your metering valve all the way. Say uh, you didn't put a screen on the top of the pot and you got a, a chunk of a bag in there or some other debris. You would simply choke the pot, open up the metering valve all the way, hit the pot and purge whatever's in that valve out, and then open up your choke valve and readjust your metering valve in. And that's going to purge the bottom of the pot and get any clump or bag or any other foreign debris out of the blast pot.